Hey folks, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good morning, wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, let me know how the sound is, everything else, uh, if we're too loud, too quiet, if everything doesn't look like it's synced up. I've just realised my camera's blurry, let me just fix that. I think I know why that is. Um, here we go, autofocus, go away. There we go, that should fix it. There we go, nice and clear now, guys. Uh, first things first, let's see who was first in chat today. Uh, first in chat today was George. Uh, he was here at 7.42pm, which was about 20 minutes ago now, 21 minutes ago. Uh, we also have I am Karcher, subscribed at Tier 1. Thank you very much. He says, good evening. Thank you very much, Karcher. Uh, Anarchy, uh, Conio, uh, Gouty, Daj, Soran, Lots and lots of uh, different people here. Uh, Gauti, no, it's not. It's not sixty percent that is laser boost. It's a it's a board that I'm building for laser boost. So this is a board that uh, I have all the parts for, and I'm giving it to Joan who runs laser boost. So if you've ever spoken to laser boost and you've ever talked to them via email or you've seen them posting things on social media, that's Joan. And uh, Joan sent me a really nice gift in the post the other week, which I showed off on Top Clack, uh, and it was along with a really nice letter. Uh, and as such, I'm going to build Joan a board. Uh, so we're going to build her a 60% today. And the request was to make it as loud as possible. So we're going to be using box navies when we get round to that sort of thing. And putting the board together with a brass plate, fresh from laser boost, nice uh, aluminium case, 60% PCB. And we'll talk through the build shortly. Let's catch up with chat and see what else everyone's talking about. Unboxing all the boards. Yes, so um, we've got uh, a Singo, we've got an IDB Steel, and we've got a GMK Waves, which we're going to unbox today on stream and take a look at. We've got quite a few people I can't catch up with everyone. We've got Huey, Vogon, Ham Time, J, XR Chaos, Shark Vaders, uh, Gooberfish, some great new names, some great usernames as well. Uh, Tuxkeys here, Meister Grin Seppo, Bot Faster Than J. Bot's already pinged, has it? So it has, yeah, wow, there we go, bot's already pinged. Um, I'm just going to scan through, see if there's anyone I've missed. Uh, Hiyonomi, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Hiyonomi, something like that. Um, <laughs> George subscribed as well, IDB Hype, uh, that was a tier one sub for six months, and we got five emotes shared for that, so thank you very much. Uh, will you be coating that plate? So I won't be coating this plate, no, this is fresh from Laser Boost, this is uh, treated brass already, so it shouldn't tarnish, it's polished, it shouldn't tarnish over time, so it'll be perfectly fine. Tuxki says it's 9 o'clock here in the Netherlands, well it's 8pm here, we're just gone, so uh, here in the UK it's looking good. E6.5 looking fine, uh, I don't know if you mean mine or the other J's, because you've tagged both, well, you've tagged the other J's, so there we go. Whereas the Swiss cheese plate, it's actually a fixed plate because Laserboost sent me uh, the plate that they want for this board, so which was really nice of them. So we'll talk through that in a bit. As loud as possible, oh god. <laughs> well, everyone was complaining that it was too quiet, so I downloaded some software that I can now boost my microphone past 100%. So now it goes up to 148%, which is a really weird number, and it's set at 136%. So you should have 36% more me than usual. Uh, but it means that you can play with your sound settings a little bit better. <clears throat> uh, Pub Goku's here as well, a Necro Woman as well. Uh, hi, Mikey Body. You go check them out, guys. You should be able to see the sponsor logo somewhere up in this corner. I can't see it, but it's somewhere up in that corner. Go check out MikeyBod.eu. They are great, great people, um, and uh, they've been big, big fans of uh, my streams and supported me a lot. So go check them out. Definitely take a look. <clears throat> Uh, Salvan's here as well. Good evening, Salvan. You need to give me an update on that piece of uh, copper that we were talking about a little while ago. <clears throat> Emotes avail. Yeah, we need to sort some proper top black ones out. Brian and I have been chatting, and we will have some at some point soon. Hopefully, when some changes happen to the channel. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, Fizzkey's here, subscribed for 27 months. That's got to be one of our longest subs, Fizzkey. I think the highest I've seen is 28. So, 27 months is, is pretty good going for it. Uh, so, thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so I think we've uh, I think we've caught up with caught up with chat. So I've got a few bits and pieces. So I'm going to let you guys vote in chat first. What do you want to see first? You want to see the steel IDB sixty, which I've just taken the delivery of nearly a hundred of these boards. Do you want to see the new Singer board, which I'm going to unbox, which is uh, which, it's a unicorn, but it's my personal one, and Elaine surprised me with the colour. Or do you want to see GMK waves first? Which which do you want to see first before we get into the build stream? Tell me, guys. Uh, 
<clears throat> let's see what people chat. I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to post up what you want to see. Oh gosh. Everyone's going nuts. Okay, so a couple of votes for Waves, a couple of votes for IDB. Uh, Satanic says Unicorn, please. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Necrowoman says Waves. Uh, Singer. Uh, unicorn, uni, waves, I, I, I don't know, please, says Guy Flocks. Um, or Guy Flakes. Flakes, I think you might pronounce that. Waves. Any artisans available? Well, we will be using the uh, the GMK Waves Kippura today for the build, because I'm going to put this on the uh, on the board for um, the stream today. So I'm going to be using this and GMK Waves. We'll see how closely this matches to the keycaps uh, when we unbox them, but um, they sadly won't be going to, uh, to Laser Boost, I'll be taking the caps and the Artisan back, it'll just be the board that gets shipped out to them. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I think, looking at this, I think the uh, the Singer wins, uh, followed by, followed by, I think it's pretty much split, so we'll do the Singer, we'll do the IDB, and then we'll do Waves, and then we'll carry on with the build from there. Okay, I meant to say IDB, but muscle memory said no. Fair enough, that makes sense. Fair enough. Looking tidy. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the, how nice is this? I, I don't know if you guys have seen these artisans, but these Kippuras, they're definitely my favourite sculpt right now. They are just absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice sculpts. Uh, Johan knocks it out of the park, and I've got more of those than I can count, so yeah, absolutely love them. Okay, so we'll go with the, uh, with the, uh, with the singer first because that seems to be what most people have asked for now this is fully sealed this is how it came in the mail uh, it was wrapped in a bag but other than that this is how i took delivery of it haven't opened it still fully sealed so we're going to open this up and see what we've got uh, tefram's here as well good afternoon sir thank you very much for joining Do this the hard way, not the easy way, and just cut through everything. It's where the bubble wrap pops damage your ears. How is Jay? I'm good, thanks, man. The stream doesn't lag anymore on my end, that's great. Glad to hear it. Okay. So here we go, guys. You can see that we've got the uh, the unicorn logo. Nice sticker that goes over the edges. Um, nice bit of branding there. Box has taken a little bit of a beating, but I'm hoping that the board's nice and secure inside. I wouldn't expect anything less from a lane. I'm going to go ahead and just slice this open. There we go. I shouldn't need a knife anymore. <clears throat> unboxing is the funnest part. Yeah, I like unboxing stuff. It, uh, it always gives me a good feeling. So first things I notice is plenty of foam. I'm gonna go from this side. Okay, okay, interesting. So first thing we get is PCB. So this is the unicorn PCB. Uh, oh, there's two, two PCBs. There we go. I must have ordered a second one. I've forgotten about it. But there we go. Two PCBs. Uh, standard 60% tray mount, but it's got relative cutouts that you can see just here and here. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna see them. You can see there's a little cutout just here. That's for, uh, for part of the mounting system for the gaskets on the board. Okay, and taking off the cover, we've got a couple of plates. So this looks like a brass plate. Lots of wrapping here. Let's get rid of that. We can wrap it back up later on. Here we go, guys. There we go. Nice brass plates. This is be blasted, so this is nice and uh, uh, sandblasted on top. It's uh, nice and smooth, not too shiny. Uh, TGR logo just in the corner here as well. It is a universal plate. Now, I do have a fixed carbon fiber plate I'll be using for one of the builds in this board, uh, but we do have that one. Put that to one side as well. Also got what looks like a grey aluminium plate as well, so again, universal, uh, it's upside down, but uh, there you go, you can see uh, grey universal aluminium plate. I'm probably not going to use this, I'll probably use the brass build and I'll probably use the carbon fibre plate that I've had made for it as well, um, and just use those two. And here we go guys, this is where we'll uh, see the board. 
Okay, so as always, Elaine with the big T's, the nice wrapping paper. So let's uh, lift this out and put it to one side. Okay, it, it is nice packaging, is this? This is I've got to be honest. This is one of my favourite parts of any unboxing when you can see um, just how much care and attention to detail has gone into this, so the branded paper and everything else. I think we can see here this is the gasket. So this is the gasket, which is part of how the mounting system works. Always useful. Um, as BT aesthetics and top quite collab needs to happen. Yeah, sure, reach out to us and we can sort something out. Hoping for hot pink. What, what colour do you guys think this is? What colour are you guys going to guess this board is? Um, have a have some guesses guys put some guesses in chat what color it is I I don't know what color this is so um, yeah we'll have to wait and see uh, and yes uh, as Satanicus says you'll have to remember what uh, what this unboxing experience is like for the J score we actually do finally build this although I'll probably put it all back in the box and uh, go through that process again blue purple red silver black hot pink a couple of votes for hot pink gray e white red gray or silver is it a color Yes, I think so. Uh, I, I assume it's a colour. I can't see anything through the paper that uh, that gives me any hints, I'm afraid. So, uh, it's nice thick paper. Kuedenka says, wait, what? Uh, Grey says, uh, Meister Grinsepo. Okay, should we, uh, should we open it up and take a look? Okay, so, find some tools. Uh, screws, bump-ons, and an Allen key, or hex key. Okay, still no clues here. What am I hoping to get? I, I don't mind. As long as it's nice, that's uh, that's all that I care about. As long as it's something that's really interesting. Okay. Oh, 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 sneak. Okay, guys, here we go. There we go, folks. I've got to be honest, this is a really, really nice colour. Uh, it's a very dusty, hot pinkish kind of reddish colour. I think this is what the velvet ones are, so I think this is one of the velvet ones. Um, it's not quite the same as the velvet ocelot. I don't know if you can see that, so it's a little bit different in terms of colour. But this is really, really nice. So it's like a, a, a dusty pinkish red. Um, really, really nice. There's uh, a couple of marks on the inside of the case that I think are just dirt. Yeah, they're wiping off. Um, one single hook mark just on the inside edge here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. There's just a tiny little hook mark just there. These scratch marks are just off the paper. They wipe off uh, quite easily. Uh, so there's just one tiny little hook mark just on the inside here. Other than that, this looks pretty much flawless. This looks really, really good. So yeah, there we go, guys. Uh, this will be on build stream in a couple of weeks' time. There's that lovely brass weight. Looks really, really good. Yeah, really, really happy with that. I'm really impressed. That colour is so nice. I can just imagine that being on my desk. Wow. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what you guys uh, thought of that. A couple of people said velvet. Uh, what do you says? That's nice. Salmon. Yeah, it's kind of like um, it is like a dusty pinkish salmon, but I think it is being called the velvet. So I think it's a little bit different to this red, as you can see. That was the original ocelot bird, uh, ocelot velvet. Uh, can you compare with the ocelot? Sure. Let me unplug the ocelot. I'll just pop that on the inside and you guys can see. Excuse the ocelot, it is a little bit dusty. But you guys can see that it is a little bit different in terms of its colour. So there we go. Uh, when are extras happening? So I don't know when extras are happening. I think it'll be relatively soon. I was part of the last batch gang, uh, so I've been waiting, waiting for my uh, for my unicorn to be delivered for some time now. But it's now here, so I'm really excited to build this in the next couple of weeks. Uh, as it's said, it's tray mount, but uh, it's kind of like a flexible uh, gasket mount at the same time. So excited to test it out and see what it feels like. Nice board. What is a sixty percent? Yep. <laughs> I like the unicorn color a lot, actually. Uh, Quirdelay, yeah, I, I out delay, I out delayed Quirdelay, yes, absolutely. 
Uh, would it look nice with Sparta maybe? Sadly Sparta's not running anymore, but it would look lovely with Sparta. I'm probably going to put red sand with this and see how it matches. If that doesn't work, I might just go with the traditional uh, white on black or black on white. Something like that. Maybe try mixing it up with something else that's got some good accent colours. Uh, Honeywell might look okay. The red might clash a little bit, but a nice grey set might look good. Muted maybe as well. So lots to play around with that on, on that one. Uh, definitely to take a look, uh, but it'll be on a build stream in a couple of weeks' time. Probably not next week, but maybe the week after, just before Christmas. So there we go. That's the uh, that's the unicorn guys. Okay, next up we said we were going to look at the IDB. Now sadly this isn't in a box, I'm just going to show you guys this straight away. Um, this is the steel one, and I'm struggling to lift it because it's really, really heavy. But this is the steel IDB60, and I'm really, really, really impressed with this. Like, so impressed I can barely tell you, because you have to excuse the fingerprints, but look how shiny this bad boy is. You can actually see all of my stream lights and my camera and everything else above the stream here. Look, there you go guys, there's the camera and everything. You can see all my lights, pictures on the wall, you can even see my reflection in it. There we go. But that is an absolute thing of beauty. So excuse the fingerprints, yeah, I, I sadly it's that heavy that you can barely lift it with one hand. So to pick it up you have to use both hands and that's just going to put fingerprints all over it. Um, and as soon as I turn it over, uh, just on the inside, you can see that you can still see some of the machining marks because the IDB was a relatively uh, low price group buy. So uh, some of the internal qualities and what we'd expect uh, of like the external quality. But this board is absolutely lovely. This is the only one of the steel ones I've unwrapped. There's only five of these in existence. Um, but as you can see, these are a lovely, lovely bit of kit. And they're going to look great once you get uh, the tops on there as well. This thing is heavy though. This Just this base piece is so, so heavy. I haven't weighed it yet, but I'm going to weigh it now just to see how much it is. Uh, just so you guys can get a, a feel for how heavy this is. So this is in pounds and ounces. So that's just over five pounds. Which is... Uh, 2,278, so 2.28 kilograms just on its own. So this is really, really, really hefty. Just for uh, for comparison, the uh, the Singer is probably a little bit lighter, even though it's got the solid brass weight. So this is the uh, the Singer. In fact, it's significantly lighter. Yeah, so that's one 1.3 kilograms, uh, which is. Two pounds fourteen ounces, and this is uh, this is significantly more than that. So yeah, it's almost twice the weight, and it's just one piece. And this has got a huge brass weight on the base of it. So yeah, significantly difference. Five pounds four ounces. Wow, zero point four ounces. So there we go, guys. That's the IDB. Is it fully steel? So no, Alu, that this is a fully steel block. This is a steel block that's been chrome plated. Uh, the, it does polish up nicely without fingerprints. I don't have a cloth to hand, but the fingerprints do polish off, and it looks it looks lovely. It looks just mirror quality. Um, so you can tilt it, and you can see just how nice that's going to be. So there we go. Flexing with that uh, fancy salt to balance. <laughs> Stole it from the kitchen. It was the wife's. She doesn't know it's in here. She'll probably miss it one day and then complain at me. Oh, there we go. So that's uh, that's those done. I think for the key set, we'll probably actually wait until we get that to that point in the build stream where we're going to actually put the keycaps on here. I will tease you with the box though. So this is the box for GMK Waves. So I think you'll uh, agree that Bip, Enjoy, uh, and Candy Keys have done a great job on on the box art. It looks fantastic. Uh, it looks like a MIDI keyboard. It fits that wave steam really nicely. Um, there you go. Just so you guys can see all four sides. Jim K waves on the side. So there we go. So we'll open this shortly. Uh, we'll take a look at that when we're actually coming to put keycaps on the board. Let's just catch up with chat and see what you guys are talking about. Uh, they didn't F up the finish ones. No, the finish on the I all of the IDBs I've opened so far, which is only about 15 of the boards in total, has been pretty good. There's been a couple of minor issues with some of them. I wouldn't call any of them 
true A plus stock. I'd say most of the A minus stock at the minute. Um, there's, there's only been one that's got any significant damage, which I'd call B stock. So, yeah, we'll probably have a, a, a look at more of those when I've opened them all up, Saran. But pretty, pretty good so far. Uh, the depleted vest bean has says have I missed much? Uh, no, you've just missed me unboxing a unicorn from Singer and the IDB 60 uh, steel edition. Uh, we're going to look at GMK waves towards the end of the stream when we've actually finished the build for laser boost today. <clears throat> Not even polished. I did polish it before the stream, but then I had to pick it up and because it's so heavy, I had to get my fingers under it. By the time I got it to underneath the camera, it was just covered in fingerprints. So there we go. I need it. You better give that back. <laughs> Keycaps now or I riot. Uh, sorry, Neb, you'll have to wait until the end. you have to wait until the end. Someone with kids is going to have a bad time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, anyone with kids or fingerprints on that board is going to have a bad time keeping it nice and neat and even. Uh, fingerprints will just show really, really easily. If there is an F-stop one, you should give it away on stream. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe not. They're, they're not my boards technically to give away, they're uh, Pingu's boards, so we're going to talk about how we're going to uh, sort out extras and things like that as soon as we finish the group by uh, shipments, so that will be at some point soon. Gloves, gloves are what you need. Yeah, so the problem is, and I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but I actually get really bad eczema on my fingers, um, so because of that, if I wear gloves, it just my fingers get stuck to the gloves or they don't feel right or they irritate and it's much nicer for my skin to just be out in the open now it doesn't affect me all the time it's only in winter that i get this so it's only been for the past three or four weeks uh prior to that i probably would have worn gloves but uh, it is getting a little bit sore and gloves mixed with that doesn't help it just makes it worse it dries my skin out more so that's not the good uh, where what is the IDB? Uh, so the IDB was the group buy for the for a single board IDB 60, uh, which was run by Pingu. Pingu had to take a leave of absence from the community. So Upas, who ran the North American version of the group buy, and I tried to uh, help him sort out the group buy in his absence. And I've just taken delivery of all of the boards. Some of you who follow my Instagram might have seen the pictures of a big crate that was nearly uh, three feet cubed that turned up the other day uh, off the back of a low loader and I couldn't lift it. It was 312 kilograms, I think, was the box, including all the wood and packaging and everything in there. So it was um, uh, there was it was like a big cube box, and then there was a layer of keyboards, and underneath that was a layer of wood, and then underneath that was a layer of keyboards, and then a layer of wood, and then a layer of keyboards, and a layer of wood. I think it was about five layers deep, and I've ended up with just shy of 100 keyboards on my dining room table. So, yeah, so there we go. Duckcomb says, Sup, Jay, I hope you're having a good evening. Yes, I'm doing well, thank you very much. <clears throat> is it me or do Jay's fingers look small compared to his hands? Yes, I have small stubby fingers and massive square palms. So my palms are just huge and square and my fingers are short and stubby. That's part of the reason why I don't type properly because my fingers don't aren't long enough to, to spread. It's why I'm terrible at the piano as well and a few other things. Just one of the marvels of genetics. Tried using some sort of moisturiser. I do, yes, but you know, typing and doing stuff all day. I'm quite an active person. It just doesn't ever heal. I've tried uh, lots of steroid type creams and things like that that are available on the NHS here in the UK as well. Um, hopefully, it won't get too bad. It's usually just when I'm out in the cold weather. Uh, so I try and stay indoors a little bit and try and keep it moisturised, and that usually helps. Yeah. <clears throat> yep, they're small, small fingers. Yep. Small, strong fingers. Yeah, well, George, uh, I don't know if you've seen, but I did announce the, uh, semi-announced the J0.4, uh, or not .4, uh, uh, the other day. So that's the 40% I'll be working on after the J02 ships, uh, and the J03, because technically that's the J04, but I called it the .4 because, well, it makes sense. So um, so technically the J.4 the J will come before the J03, which is the 1800 or mini 1800. Uh, that's going to be towards the back end of 2020 now. Uh, so the plan is to run the J02 in February and then start to look at getting some prototypes over the course of January and February for the J.4. And then we'll go from there. But the J.4 is more likely to get into group by first than the J03. So just a, a bit of a... Yeah, a bit of a, uh, a funny turnaround in terms of the uh, the numbers and things like that. Um, you're going to regret naming it the Jagger. I didn't name it the Jagger, so the uh, the the 40s Discord called it the Jagger because they said that uh, I was going to do it staggered, and then it became the J Stagger, and then it became the Jagger. So so they named it that, 
and I'm going to let them deal with that name. I'm not going to call it that in anything official. Um, but yes, uh, that is the case. Uh, last update before we move on to the build, because I'm conscious I want to get this board built for Lazy Boost. I'm not sure if Joan's watching tonight, but if she is, hi Joan. Uh, I hope you enjoy the build, and I hope you like the board once it's done. Uh, but the last thing I want to call out is right down here in the bottom corner, you can see that the J01 raffle is still on. It opened on November the 24th. It closes on December the 23rd. So it's open for almost a month. We've been open for two weeks today and we've sold about 1500 tickets which is absolutely amazing so 1500 five dollar tickets have been sold now for charity this all benefits the Sue Ryder Hospice which is uh, a series of hospices in my area in the UK they looked after my mum in the final few days earlier on this year and the level of care and support they provided was fantastic not just for my mother but for the family friends everyone who needed it as well relatives um, you know they, they are such a supportive and caring um, uh, charity that uh, that I want to donate that to them and the final J01 board will be raffled off in January so there's the uh, there's the raffle here that you can buy tickets for and that board will be given away on top clack on the 26th of December we'll pick a winner from all of the raffle tickets bought the more tickets you buy the more options you've got to win the more chance you've got to win and then the final J01, which will also be uh, sold for the charity, will be sold by a silent auction to the highest bidder in January. So that's going to open for two weeks in January, and whoever bids the most amount of money, pays that amount of money, all of that, all of, this, all of those funds will go to the same charity, and they will get the final J01. So there we go. Okay. <clears throat> Nebula says, can confirm if you don't have a J01, you should really try and get one. I understand that it was about 40% of the J01 owners were all at the meetup yesterday uh, in, in SoCal. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, Lazy Boost is here. Joan, hi, Joan. <laughs> Glad to see you. Uh, thank you very much for this note, Joan, and thank you very much for my gift. Shall I just show you guys what Joan sent me, actually? Let me, uh, let me grab it. So for those of you that don't know, my other hobby is cars, and my my real surname outside of this is Flynn, um, and Joan had this made for me, which is a huge metal uh, kind of sign saying Flynn's Garage, my, my home city, uh, and uh, one of my cars is a Datsun 240Z, and she's had this all laser cut with the silhouette of a Datsun 240Z, which is so super cool, and it's absolutely amazing, and I, I've got the perfect spot to put this up, it's going to be going up in the next couple of weeks in the uh, in the garage I'm going to take some pictures and put them on Instagram uh, and because of that that's why I want to uh, to build Joan this board today so that she's got something to clack on in the office rather than just uh, using whatever membrane boards the company provides there we go okay so that's really really nice I can't wait to get that up um, and then we'll go from there uh, George is pacing things about Discord. Visionaire, yes, we have waves here. We will be unboxing waves for the board later on. Uh, sorry, Joan, you can't keep the key set, I'm afraid, but you will get to keep the board and everything that goes into the board other than the key set. So, what we're building today, we are building a 60%. This is going to be using USB C, uh, GMK stabs. These are good GMK stabs. I've rescued them from an earlier build. They are clip ins, but they're old style ones, so they should feel just fine. These are in use and they're confirmed working really, really well. So we're going to use those. Uh, Bump-ons, just bump-ons, standard, regular bump-ons. 60% PCB. So this is just a standard 60% PCB. USB-C undergo, which doesn't really matter for this particular build, um, but uh, nicely USB-C there. Uh, and then we've got a standard 60% tray mount case in a lovely grey blue. So it should work with waves really well, actually. Uh, this has never been used, it's brand new, uh, it was just in my collection. I do have the weight for it somewhere, I'll have to dig that out uh, separately. So there we go, so that's what we're going to build today. In terms of switches, we are going to be using Fox Navies. So Joan's request was that this is as loud and as clicky as possible. I think she wants to be obnoxious in the office, so those are absolutely going to help that. And to help the fluckiness as well, we've got a nice brass plate. So this is going to be uh, a tray mount brass plate. This is one that Jones produced herself as part of working for Laser Boost. Uh, ISO layout, as you can see, with a Sangan 7U bottom row, which is quite possibly the best bottom row you can have. Uh, it's a nice, solid brass plate. So this is going to be uh, <laughs> really, really, really nice, really loud. It's going to really challenge your co-workers I'll be honest Joan it's going to be uh, pretty loud when we get to the end of the stream I'm pretty sure uh, but I'm excited to see what you think of it when we uh, when we get to that point okay just pop that to one side and 
without much further ado, we will crack on with the build. Uh, Lazy Boo says, it's Christmas for me, thank God. <laughs> Navies are so nice. Navies are nice. They're probably one of the nicer clicky switches, yes. Uh, Cartridge says, are we going to do a J-score for this one? Um, I, I, I would suggest we're not going to do a J-score for this particular board, but what we will do a J-score right at the end of the stream for is the Equinox. Uh, I've been talking about doing a J-score for the Equinox for a while, so I'll just see if I can grab that without knocking everything over. So we'll do a J-score for the Equinox at the end of the stream, um, which is Pona's board. It went into group buy a short while ago. My artisan I took off for uh, for another use. So we'll talk about that board later on. We'll give this a J-score towards the end of the stream, so we're still doing at least one J-score today. Given this isn't a, uh, a custom as such, we're probably not going to J-score this because it's just a standard tray mount case. It's not something that comes from a group buy or anything. There we go. Okay, there we go. Equinox, damn small. Yeah, the Equinox is uh, very much a 45% um, uh, design, so yeah, looking forward to, uh, to looking at it. Because AI and Pony, yeah. Um, I, I love that little board, it's my little travel board usually during the week, so yeah. Okay, so without much further ado, now these stabilizers have already been clipped and they were lubed once before. I am going to touch them up on the lube as well before we go any further. So I'm just going to pop the stabilizer wires out. Sadly, in a bit of a office mix-up, my wife threw away my uh, old um, my old tub of lube. It got chucked out. So sadly, I'm now onto a new tub, which. Is a little bit thicker than the old stuff, but it should work just fine. So we're just going to top this up. We're just going to put some onto the stem. Get nice, nicely covered. And we're going to use a brush to just make sure it's all nice and even. I don't usually like working with this thicker stuff, but it should be just fine. So you can see now that we're just going to brush this all around here just like so. Then I'm going to pop that back into the housing and then we're going to rinse and repeat on the other side. Okay, there we go. Rinse and repeat on this side. So we apply this with the brush I think. This is way thicker than the old stuff that I used to use so Hoping this works just as well. Not usually a fan of the thicker versions, but it should work just fine. There we go, that's the space bar completed. Then I'm going to replicate this on the backspace and enter keys. Make sure we remove as much rattle as possible on these. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what chat's talking about. Uh, office score minus 100 for for this build yes uh, yeah it would be very unfair to J score this one because it's uh, uh, it, a it's not a custom board it's uh, a search it's not something that's been brought from a group by it's just some in stock parts so it wouldn't really be fair to J score it compared to some of the other boards that are on there um, it's not something that's uh, you know comes as a specific kit so there we go, that's that one done. Move on to the final one. And so I'm definitely going to have to find some of the normal dielectric grease that I use because this is a lot thicker than what I'm used to using. Okay, and then the final one. 
Bingo, it's a score sheet we've been doing at the end of the stream a few times now, basically giving the score to different uh, boards. Yeah, if you've ever seen uh, Doug DeMuro doing his uh, Doug scores for cars, uh, it's basically the same idea but for me and keyboards, uh, with a few different tweaks and twists. Uh, if you type in exclamation mark J score, you can actually bring up the, uh, um, the spreadsheet yourself, take a look at it, see what we've already scored, uh, see how we score it. Okay, so that's all of those installed. I'm just going to pop these in as they are. And as I say, we are using the 7U layout for the spacebar. So I'm going to pop this just in here. And then we've got the uh, ISO enter key, which is going to go just here. And then we've got the backspace key, which is going to go in just there. Now that's done, I'm just going to use my brush very quickly and I'm going to just quickly lube the sides of each of the sliders on this. Uh, I don't want to put too much more grease than is already uh, on here, so I'm just putting a very thin layer on each side of the sliders. Try not to uh, Okay, all of my hands here. There we go. That's that one done. This is way thicker than I'm used to using. I'm not not sure I'm a fan of this particular stuff. Just pop a little bit on the space bar as well, and then we'll tune these later on if they have any issues. But I'm pretty sure, given the thickness of this stuff, it's going to be more than fine. There is not going to be much opportunity for rattle in these stabilizers now. Okay, there we go. The stabilizer sorted. Next thing to do is take a look at the plate. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, Mantic Zeus says, I was wondering, was the profit you have a group buyer? I couldn't find any info on it. Uh, so the profit I have was actually part of a private buy. It was a part of a prototyping round. Um, I think there's gonna be a group buy in the new year for the board. It's definitely something that there's a lot of interest in, so yes. Um, when will we do a J-score of the J01 and why will it be a perfect score? I don't think it's fair for me to J-score my own boards because I'm not impartial. The only way I can think of that's fair to do it instead of just doing the J-score and the community score is only to do the community score for any of my boards because it's just really not fair if I do them. Um, so maybe we'll do that at some point or maybe where you could come on and you could be a guest and I could send you the JO2 where you could take some pictures of it and you could J-score both of the boards and we could do a bit of a joint stream. Perhaps that's something that might be interesting. And you can do the J-score and I'll just sit there and smile and look pretty. <coughs> Perhaps that's something we can do. Um, 159 is here, hello. Uh, you need to reply to my message on which Kapoor you want 159 sent you a picture the other day. Uh, but I know you've been at the meetup so uh, that's probably why you didn't get back to me. Space by a wire looks a bit warped. Uh, nope, looks nice and straight to me. I think it's just the camera with the straight edges and things like that. Do it. Okay, cool. We shall do that. <laughs> we shall do that. We'll uh, we'll arrange uh, a Quirdenka visit to uh, complete J scores. Okay, so we're now going to take the plate out. Uh, this is the first time we've opened this plate. It hasn't been out of the bag before. Here we go. This is a lovely shiny boy. It's going to be rather nice and loud. So just what Joan has asked for. There we go. I'll try and keep too many fingerprints from it. Uh, given the fact that these are not PCB mount switches, they're just plate mount switches, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put four switches in, one in each corner, plus two in the middle to give us a total of six. And then from there, what I'm going to do is uh, solder those ones in and then once I've done that I will put the rest of the switches into the board. Now the board, the PC, the plate is fixed, uh, it's fixed layout to a Sangan bottom row and an ISO layout. 
Well, actually, that might hold together, actually. We'll see. We'll just put the uh, the four switches in for now, and then we'll go from there. Uh, as well as that, it's also got some of the uh, traditional acoustic cuts that we see on a lot of plates these days. So just around here, you can see it's got some acoustic cuts, which should also help with the sound. Okay, let's, uh, let's just solder those four in first. And put two in the centre as well, and we'll solder those in. to be nice and loud. First time I see a plate build, this is a magic moment. There you go, yeah. Okay, so what we're just gonna do now, John, is effectively make sure that everything stays held together nice and neat and tightly. Uh, we're gonna do that just by soldering in these first few switches. Then we'll carry on putting the rest of the switches into the board, knowing that everything's nice and tightly aligned. just pushing down lightly here just to make sure that everything is as tight against the plate and the PCB as it could be. Okay, come back over, do the final corner just here. And then we'll just quickly do the two in the middle. Again, just putting some nice even pressure on the board just to make sure that everything is fully aligned uh, nothing's moving around, nothing's slipping out of place. And then we can carry on with the build by putting the rest of the switches in. There we go. Uh, Sangan, I think you mean seven new bottom row Zambu's bot somewhere. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, it was named Sangan after the guy that first started to use it a lot. Uh, he was called Sangan, um, or his uh, username was Sangan, and uh, it, it is from there. But yes, uh, seven new bottom row is correct. Sangan as a full layout is slightly different because you just split backspace and everything else. But uh, yeah, everyone knows it as Sangan. It's common lexicon, so whether it's technically correct to call it something different or not. Common lexicon is usually the best way to uh, to go through naming convention, and of course we all know what it means. So there we go. Okay, so these are clipping into this plate nice and tightly, uh, as you can hear, they're going in pretty nice. So we shouldn't have any problems holding everything together while we solder now. There we go. Technical correct is the best type of correct. Uh, yeah, it is. It is the the best type of correct. But you know, common lexicon is usually the better way of dealing with the community. I found um, if everyone knows it by something, then that the, the meaning of words change over time. The etymology of words changes over time, uh, as do their definitions and um, uh, the, how they're put into practice as well. So, you know, it's uh, it's always good to try and follow standards where possible, but uh, bear in mind that they do change and tweak over time. What was the right answer 15, 20 years ago isn't necessarily the right answer or word or uh, choice today. Okay. Use the right tool for the job, flush cutters. What job is that for? Uh, pliers and twist them off. What's this that we're talking about? I was kind of bummed that I didn't use my Everglides on this GMMK and I didn't understand there was a difference. Oh, okay, so yeah, so, um, yes, so on the GMMK you can't use PCB mount switches, right? So on a PCB mount switch, that's probably a really bad example, let me find a switch. So on a PCB mount switch you will have little legs like this, you see them just here, whereas on non-PCB mount, on plate mount switches you won't, you'll just have the two pins, so there's no, none of these additional little legs. Uh, that stick up. Now you can just take a pair of flush cutters and cut them off. Look, I'll show you on this particular one. Uh, let me grab some flush cutters. I've got some somewhere. Here we go. Uh, so, uh, Professor Cattington, I think it was, you can just take flush cutters, line it up with the leg. Let's get this to zoom in uh, and just snip. 
and that flew off somewhere across the room. But you get the point and you turn it around, put it to the other side, flush cutters, and snip. And there you go, you now have a PC beam, a plate mount switch. There you go, nice and simple. It takes a while if you're doing a whole board, but it's well worth the effort if you need to do it. Okay, I'm just going to put the lid back on this dielectric grease because it's getting everywhere. There we go. Gem pots here as well. What, what is this slurp meme? I'm not sure I get it. Not sure I get what this slurp meme is. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What is it? What is it? <clears throat> Both equally correct in this instance. Yes. It's nice to be equally correct. <laughs> Uh, we've got Disco Crocodile here as well. That's a great username. Disco Crocodile. That is a fantastic username. Love that. What is this slurp mean? Slurp Pepega Pog? What does slurp mean? Please, guys, tell me. Okay, so this is a uh, PCB that we've reused from before. And one of the things I've noticed is that there's uh, this switch port here. I'll show you in a second. Uh, has still got some solder in it, so I'm not sure how clear this is going to be, but you might just be able to see in here That's just plugged up. So before we put a switch in there I'll heat that up and push the switch through it and then resolder it afterwards. So I'm just going to leave that one till last I do apologize Joe. Not all of these parts are brand new sadly uh, the switches are new the, uh, the the plate is new the case is new, but the PCB is uh, uh, Being recycled upcycled whatever the more common term is these days For this particular build this is not Nathan Kim's chat. <laughs> Nathan Kim used to make a super annoying slurping sound on his streams before he started to get big and it just became a meme. Yeah, okay, well, let's leave that for Nathan's streams then. Okay. Making some good progress now, guys. I'm really excited to see what uh, this sounds like and to get Jim K waves on there. Hopefully, we're going to hit our target as being as loud as possible. Uh, if it is too loud, Joan, as well, one of the things that I will do is I'll include some foam that you can put in the bottom of the PCB case uh, of the or the keyboard case, which will quieten it down some as well. So if it is too loud, which it may well be, being clickies on a brass plate, and that does frustrate you, you can quiet it down a little bit by putting some sound deading in the bottom of the case, and I'll include that in the box for you as well, so you'll be able to uh, to do that quite easily. <clears throat> okay. Did I already show the IDB60? Yes, I did. I can show it again though if you want to see it. All right, it's just as shiny as this brass. This is the IDB60. Excuse fingerprints, but this is the steel IDB60. It's a fingerprint magnet. I've picked it up twice now and it's covered in fingerprints. Um, but there you go, yeah. It's a uh, heck of a boy. Here you go. You can see my camera set up. There we go. Oh, hold on. There you go. That's my camera on its small rig and flexible arm above the stream and you can see that I've got the stream lights wired into the ceiling so you can see uh, two big lights there and there there you go showing off my setup through reflections <clears throat> yeah it's really shiny it's um it reminds me of um oh what's the character from Star Wars now from the new Star Wars movies um the shiny chrome stormtrooper oh Name has just slipped out of my head. It'll come back to me. Or one of you will know. <clears throat> Phasma, that's the one. Yeah. Is the guy's status still known? Uh, no. So, Jake Reps, uh, Pingu, who was the guy behind the IDB60, uh, he did take a leave of absence from the community for a short while, but he's actually in chat tonight. So, uh, he is back. He's on the, on the stream, even. There we go. Gosh, that one was tight. Not sure if that was a switch or a of the plate, but that one was pretty tight. Okay, it's starting to get there now. Uh, guys in chat, should I give uh, should I give Joan stepped caps or full caps? What should we do? Stepped or full caps for Joan? Yep, Zambu Pingu's back. Pingu is back. IDBs are in stock. They're all taking up space in my kitchen right now. 
Step, 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 full steps. Everyone's going step, so there we go. <laughs> Joan, you're getting stepped, I think. <clears throat> Normal caps is the big no. There we go. Okay, so I think everyone's saying you're getting step caps there, Joan. So there we go. Zambu, I think this is uh, the second week on the trot we've seen on the stream, so thank you very much for joining, dude. It's uh, a pleasure and a privilege to have you here. Everyone's saying stepped. I don't think anyone said full. Uh, step caps, I have spoken. This is the way, right? This is the way. Okay, step caps, last uh, switch until we uh, just reflow the solder just in this hole here. So I'm just going to line the switch up ready to push in. It's going to be pretty tight, I think, but uh, what we'll do is we'll just heat up the pad as we uh, give it a push and hopefully it'll go through. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to check everything is nice and neatly aligned so you guys can see on the edges all the switches are close to the PCB. Same down here as well. All nice, neat and even. Looking really rather tidy. This is going to be a really loud board, Joan. I hope you're ready for this. So now we've done that, it's time to solder the rest of the board. Only full if it's control. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, if you have moved control to where caps lock is, that's sometimes a reason to use uh, uh, a full key. I still I do that on most of my builds, and I still use the uh, the stepped key, uh, and I still tend to keep the caps key there rather than the uh, the control one. Okay, so we're just going to try and fly through this soldering really quickly. Then we'll uh, put the uh, PCB to the test. We'll get switch hitter up and test it out. And then once we've tested the uh, the PCB out, made sure everything's working, we'll uh, then put the board in the case, unbox GMK Waves, take a look at that set, see how good that is, see what we think to that, see how close it is to renders, see how closely the Kipora matches. Uh, and then from there we'll do a bit of a sound test, then we'll J-score the IDB60, we won't J-score this build, um, but we'll J-score the IDB60, and uh, not the IDB60, the uh, the Equinox from Pona, sorry, the Equinox, or Equinox, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, we will do an IDB60 on here at some point actually, uh, I will get an IDB60 uh, into, uh, into the J-score. Maybe we have to do that one twice, so maybe we have to do the steel one as well as the uh, uh, the aluminium one. Okay, uh, and then we'll close down the stream after that. So, still lots of content to come. GMK Waves, Equinox J score, typing test of this board, and then there we go, that'll be the stream done. Okay, making good progress now. Almost two full rows done. Okay. And if you guys have got any questions, now is the best time to post them in chat. Do tag me with at top crack if you've got any questions. Uh, make sure I see them. I'll try and keep up with chat as best as I can, but I do often miss things. So if you've got any questions for me, uh, just tag me with at top clack. Can be keyboard related, uh, can be work related, can be home life related, can be related to food or drink, anything you like. I'm not shy, so anything you ask, I will probably answer as long as it's Twitch and stream safe. Uh, you had one job. What did I have the job to do? We need that emote, except we put Brian's head on it. Okay, uh, yeah, Baby Yoda drinking broth emote. Okay, yeah, we can do that. We can get uh, an emote with Brian's head on and that. That, that. That's not a problem. That's definitely something we can do, Neb. I'll hit you up afterwards and we'll, we'll sort that out. <clears throat> uh, Jampot says, uh, love the J0.4 layout, uh, by the way, count me in. Um, yeah, so it was going to be the J04 originally, uh, because we have the J01, which is the 65% uh, uh, the exploded version with macro keys. Then we've got the J02, which is the straight 60 and win keyless version. Uh, the J03 is going to be a mini 1800 version, but that's probably a little bit longer out. And then I always intended on doing a 40 or a 45% and calling it the J04. 
but because it's 40%, the J0.4 just sounded, or the J0.4, just sounded a little bit more fun. Uh, and the Fortis community have, have effectively, uh, affectionately named that the Jagger, because it's got the J stagger, but that's just standard stagger, which is rather strange, but they're strange folks over there, although I do like them, do enjoy hanging around with them. <clears throat> uh, but that's likely to be uh, going to IC sometime in Q end of Q1 2020 officially, uh, and then probably we'll see a group buy in Q2. Remember, folks, the uh, the J01 currently you can buy raffle tickets supporting the Sue Rider cause uh, for the J01, and also there'll be a, a high bid silent raffle for a second J01 in January as well, all towards the same cause, all towards Sue Rider. So please do go check those out. And the J02 does go on sale in February as well. That'll be on mykeyboard.eu and Canon Keys. So uh, excited to get that into group by two. Okay. Have a look, see if you guys have got any more questions. Uh, Hoiny Mini says, I, I'd ask how the Equinox is, but I think you covered it in the J Scott. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, Jake Repsha says, Is the J0.4 going the Equinox route where it's possible to base kit build it? Uh, yes, so, every, so it's been designed from the ground up. So I started off uh, with a bit of a meme. I, want, I, I like to use 7U spacebar, there's no secrets there. So I started off designing it around. Uh, a seven new space bar. So how do I get a seven new space bar on a forty percent? Was the first consideration I had. That was relatively e easily achieved uh, by doing a forty-five percent version. And I've got a really nice bottom row with blockers. It's kind of a take on wing keyless. Um, it's similar to the Equinox, only it's not six U and one U blockers. So that was the first starting point. The second thing I wanted to do was make sure that you can cover it with a standard GMK keycap set. Uh, if anyone's uh, in my Discord and wants to link to the uh, the actual um, layouts that I've uh, I've posted, then please do because I can't do that while I'm soldering. Uh, but the the second thing was to make it make it make sure it's it's GMK base base kit compatible, uh, which a lot of forties aren't. So that was the second consideration. Uh, and then the final consideration was to actually make it usable, make it a layout that I thought I could use um, on a daily basis without any challenges. So that came out to be. Uh, the layout that it did, and Forty's Discord were pretty, uh, pretty overwhelmingly positive about it. To be honest, they were a lot nicer and more considerate than I was expecting. I was expecting some blowback and a bit of uh, negativity, but everyone was really pleasant and nice, and seemed to uh, think the layout made sense. So I think it's pretty unique in the Forty's world. I don't think we've seen it before. Um, so yeah, excited to uh, to get that out there. <clears throat> okay, uh, does Coke and Coke Zero taste the same, says uh, Testale? I think so. I disagree. I can taste the difference between Coke and Coke Zero. Give me a blind taste test. I will tell you the difference between Coke, Coke Zero, Diet Coke, any variation of Coke you give me, I'll tell you the difference. Uh, my name is The Royal, says Jay. What is the name of the iron you're using? This is the TS100. Uh, I use this because it's my favourite iron. Uh, interchangeable tips, dead cheap. I think it was 60 quid. Uh, USB software firmware upgradable so you can control the heat much more accurately. Um, really, really, really nice soldering iron. Um, yeah, nice pointed tips for SMD soldering. Nice rounded tips or chisel tips for standard soldering. Yeah, really, really nice iron. <coughs> um, Jampot says, was there a price estimate for the JO2? Not yet, but Upas, my keyboard and I are getting together this week and we're going to talk through, so we should have some prices to announce either late December or early January. Excuse me, it will be a long time before the group buy starts and we will make sure we get the price out there as soon as we can. Uh, ISO return subscribe at tier one, subscribe for 12 months, says, yeah, happy TC New Year. I hope you all have an awesome evening, fellows. Jay is always working it hard. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate that, dude. Seven is the magic number. I thought that was three, but that might be a different thing. Uh, Twitch is so confusing these days, but thanks indeed. Okay. <laughs> I can taste the difference between Cokes too. Yeah, any variation of Coke you say. Yeah, I, I can generally taste the difference. Baby Groot or Baby Yoda? Uh, Baby Yoda has to be. Yeah, easy. Pepsi 2. This is man is a Coke. Coke per? Coke per? Okay, yeah. The only thing I wish about the Equinox is that the left shift will also allow you to put a 1U on the outside and a 1.25U on the inside. That would be interesting, actually, yeah. Um, I didn't realise it didn't, but yeah, good shout. Uh, Baby Groot. 
Yeah, okay. Did you look at my Steel IDB60? Yes. Uh, Emir forgot about the stream. Do you want to see the Steel IDB60, Emir? Let me, let me get this up for you. Excuse the fingerprints because it's a fingerprint magnet, but here is the Steel IDB60. Um, you will not keep fingerprints off this board. I polished this just before the stream, picked it up once, and it was covered in fingerprints pretty much instantly. Uh, showing off all my stream lights and stream setup above. And there you go, you can see this is exactly how it is. Uh, some machine marks on the inside, but again, this was a relatively cheap board. Uh, so there we go. Uh, it was like three kilograms, we can wait again. <clears throat> so, here you go. This is just the weight of this one. This is in pounds and ounces. Uh, 5.04 pounds, which is in grams, so it's uh, 2,279 grams or uh, 2.28 kilograms, so just shy of 3 kilograms. Uh, sorry, well, just shy of 2.3 kilograms, sorry. There we go. It's a heavy boy, trapped fingers, all of that kind of stuff as well. Okay, so that's the board soldered together. It's now time to uh, to get switch hitter up and see if we can get it working. It should work. I tested the PCB before the stream, so it should all be working. Um, let's see if you can see switch hitter now. Ta-da, there you go. Okay, I'm going to steal this cable. Oh, great. Okay, so it's now not connecting. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so all the top row looks like it's working just fine. My PC is now going nuts because I've connected something new. Oh yeah, so well, let's do, let's just change this over to ISO. That would have made more sense. I can't remember the last time I did a clicky, clicky build, guys. Can you remember what the last clicky build I did was? Okay, all working so far. Okay, it needs to reprogram the PCB a little bit, but there we go. So everything's working. I think that's FN. Uh, yeah, so that's FN, so we've got the F keys up there as well. Okay, so that's all working. So everything's working, always good. <coughs> Are those gasp clickies? Yes, yes. Uh, Joan from Laser Boost wanted this board to be as loud as possible. That was the directive I was given when I offered to build the board for her. She said, make it as loud as you possibly can. So brass plate, clicky switches, uh, aluminium case. I'm just going to pop this in here. There we go. I'm going to screw this in place in a second. Uh, I did get some screws out for this. Here we go. These are torque screws. So I'm just going to find the right bit that fits in these. I think it's this one. That will do the job. Come on. Come on. No, I've lost the script. There we go. Try and keep this all even, make sure it's all nice position inside the case. There we go. That's one side done. Flick over to this side. Uh, add a solenoid. Yes, we could add a solenoid. I have actually got a driver for a solenoid. I'd need to pick one up, so uh, yeah, we could definitely do that. Phoenix stems, and I, yes, it was a Phoenix stems. I do remember that built now, yes. So that was just after I got back from Seattle, I think. Uh, was it the Clipper that we built with Phoenix stems, I think? Clipper, I think. Okay. I felt like it was cross thread in that, so I'm just going to... Start one again, there we go. Okay, 
Okay, that one's not going to go in because the screw won't go past the space bar cut out. It'll be alright without it. And that's just cross threading slightly. Okay. Again, don't over tighten these guys. When you tighten them down, you are holding the PCB uh, into place with them, so you don't want to crush the PCB and damage it. That's all in place. Uh, I will send some foam across with this as well, Joan. So if you do need to uh, quieten the board down, you can just undo the screws that I've put in there. You can put some foam underneath the board uh, and then you can screw it back down and it will quieten it significantly. So it won't be a quiet board by any means, but it will make it a lot quieter. In fact, I'll grab that now so you can see it. Uh, here it is. So effectively you just uh, put this underneath the PCB, uh, it's just a nice piece of foam that uh, goes underneath the PCB, it's already got cutouts in it for the uh, uh, for the uh, reset button and for the USB ports, so nice and easy to, uh, to do. Okay, we can get rid of switches now, you guys don't need to be able to see that anymore. <coughs> uh, Non-magnet screws is sadistic, yes, uh, yes, well they were the only ones I had so that's how it happened, that's how it went. Okay. Um, could pop some bump-ons on the base now. These are just standard bump-ons that I had lying around. Gosh, that's, uh, that's already sounding pretty loud. There we go. Okay. And now it's probably a good time to take a look at GMK Waves. So for those of you who haven't seen this key set before, this is a key set that was run by Enjoy and Beep, uh, GMK Waves. Um, so yeah, very, uh, very exciting to do it. Uh, do you have the specs of the, the black hole? Uh, you mean the base, this this bit here, is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, I've actually got a metal weight that'll go in there nicely. Um, I've actually got, it is somewhere around, I just need to actually find it, I couldn't find it before the stream. I was out with the mother and father-in-law today and didn't get a chance to find it before the stream, but I've got a nice piece of aluminium that just fits in there, so yeah. <coughs> laser boost is here too, yeah. Um, this board is for laser boost, this is for Jo and this is gonna be her board, so uh, yeah, she's uh, she's definitely here. Okay, so here we go guys, we're now going to open Jim K Waves. So this is the first time I've seen it. I know there's been a few pictures around on the internet that I have seen, but this is uh, the first time I've opened it. So, there we go. Let's take a look and see how this keycap set turned out. Oh wow, okay, so first thing I notice is a little bit more green than I was expecting. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just how it was in my head or if that's how it was. In the renders. So I do wish GMK get better trays, there we go. This is kind of like a, a green Solarized dark. In fact, it, 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 the base color actually reminds me a lot of what uh, Nautilus Nightmares looks like a little bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's different, but uh, it does remind me a little bit of that. The, uh, the green for the Legends is very, very vivid. It's really, really vivid. Very, uh, very interesting. Let's take a look at one of the mod keys. So nice, crisp Legends. These are dark, just a shade off black, almost a blue. Uh, very, very nice colour. And then here's the uh, the green. This is really bright. I, I can't... It's almost luminous. I don't, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up, but this is almost luminous. This is really, really bright. Um, really bright indeed. Let's see how well it matches the Kipura. So the Kipura looks good with it. I don't think it's an exact match. It's, uh, it's kind of a little off. The... Uh, the blue colour on the Kipura doesn't really match, but the bright green is pretty close. Let's compare that to the mods. Oops. 
but you can see it's a little bit off, but it still looks great. There we go. The green is super green. It gives me good, pleasant feelings for GMK Toxic. I'm not going to use the Kapura because I don't think it matches quite as well as I thought it would do. The, the Waves Kapura is lovely. It's a great Kapura. But I don't think it matches the set quite as well as I was hoping it would do. So I think I'm just going to go with... Uh, uh, with the, uh, the standard set. Now, in fact, guys, I won't use the accents. You guys tell me what you want to see, whether you want to see the accents or not. Um, I'm just going to put the alphas on here and the standard modifiers, and then you guys tell me what you want to see from there. Okay. The accents are rad. That is bright. The green is defo leviathan level. Yeah, absolutely. I'd agree. Professor Kettington, is that the uh, is that burb for uh, for the uh, Kipura or is it for uh, for an ETF raffle? I need to try and enter whilst I entertain you guys on stream. Okay, this set is a lot more green than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a lot more blue, uh, but it's definitely a green set all over. Even the base colour of the alphas is definitely green. So guys, you need to decide whether we should use a standard or the green escape, the accent escape, and same for the enter key as well. So do you want to see the bright green uh, accents or do you want to see the standard accents? Or the standard modifier, sorry, should I say. Go accent, okay, go accent for the escape and the enter, or just for the escape? In fact, do we have a choice? We have to go, we have to go accent for the enter. There is no... There is no choice in that. You have to use the accent enter for ISO. Oh no, you don't. It's there. There it is. Okay, so that's unusual. It never comes in a base kit. There, the, the that's always the um, it's always anti in this bit. I've never seen a Jim K set come with ISO in the main tray before. It's always ANSI just here. But no, nope, we've got accent here. Green alien bold for the enter. Okay, cool. We can do that. I have never ever seen bleeding. I've never ever seen even in, even with EU designer sets. I've never seen ISO in this main part of the trade before. The ISO key is always off to one side, and this section is always ANSI. Uh, interestingly, they've only put the ISO enter key here. They haven't put the ISO uh, split left shift. So interesting. Interesting. <laughs> this is a marked improvement indeed. Uh, I've opened a lot of GMK sets. I think I've probably got about 70 or 80 of them right now. And uh, that's the first one I've ever seen that's come from the factory uh, laid out like that. Zambu, if you're still here, please confirm if this is a one-off or if this is GMK's new way of doing it. I'm the only one in the stream with an N key in the keyboard. Actually, you're not. Ask, uh, ask Zambumon because his N N-A kit. Uh, he has that uh, that key. He had a whole Hamon keycap set that was made, and the whole kit that had something like 15 of those keys was uh, was in there. You wanted the green end key, so I'll put that on there. That is really bright. Uh, we went stepped cap, so I need to find the stepped cap slot key. It's there. ISO is not really a Dutch thing. Everyone says EU uses ISO a lot, but here in the Netherlands, most keyboards seem to be ANSI. Yes, so uh, ISO is not used in uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, it's very much, uh, I think it's the only EU country that doesn't have a majority using it on, on OEM builds. Uh, so within the community, it's a very different thing. So ISO is very limited in terms of the community. But if you look outside of it to manufacturers like Apple and Acer and all of that, um, across the EU, except for in the Netherlands and a couple of other small countries, Luxembourg for one, they don't use ISO, uh, they, they use ANSI as a standard. And it's just what those countries have adopted. <coughs> It is much more dominant in the EU than anywhere else right now. Yes, you're, you're right. Uh, there are other places in the world that do use ISO, but uh, it's it's very much a, uh, a European dominated market. Okay, so now we need the short shift, which is here. There should be an R4 key somewhere that will allow me to uh, use the ISO layout. It's here. There we go. So sadly no UK ISO in this set, uh, there's no US ISO in this set either, depleted of uh, You have basically got a choice of uh, the standard semi-UK ISO layout, uh, which has been broadly adopted by the community. Whether people agree or disagree, different question, but uh, that's what it's got. 
I do like these keycaps from the inside, actually. The bright green really is nice. And what, what I can see on my screen, which is what I think you guys can see on yours for how the camera's picking it up, that's not an understatement. That is how bright this green is. It's extremely vivid. It hurts to look at it. Uh, we need split right shift. So we've got that key there. Uh, and we'll find the FN key. I think we're going to have to use a code key. Yep. Can't see... Can't see anything else, we'll put code in for there. And then we've got. Oh, we do have an FN key, I've now found it. We have found the FN key, so we'll change it over in a second. Okay. Even those, even these are new box switches that are uh, definitely uh, not the ones that break keycaps. Are brand new. They're still really tight. So there we go, guys. That's the uh, the board all put together with the keycaps on it. I'll show you that up close in a second. Let me just pop these away so I don't lose them. I do wish GMK had better trays. I've got this upside down, no wonder it doesn't want to go in. But I do wish that these keycap trays were better quality. It'd be really nice if they were usable for storage as well. Okay, there we go. So there we go guys, this is GMK Waves on a brass plate GH60 build with box navies, I think she's going to be really loud, box navies and a brass plate. There you go. I think this keycap set is really, really nice. Uh, it, it does look a little bit more green than I was expecting. I was, I was expecting it to be more blue than green, uh, but it is very, very green. It's really, really nice though. This, this yellow, this yellow, uh, bright green, neon green, what you're seeing on camera, that's how bright it is, guys. It is not the camera, you know, making it look brighter than it is, that is, that's how it is. It is really bright, really bright. Let's see if I can show you that up a little bit closer. There we go. So there we go. Um, I like the green stuff, lose the accents and it's perfect. Yeah, I think if it was for me, I would lose the accents. I probably wouldn't use these keys. I'd change them for the uh, the standard mod colored keys, but I tend to prefer doing that anyway. It's where I use accent keys. He says that he's got a board full of accent keys just at the side, but it's, it's where I do. Um, I'm just gonna test out these stabilizers, see if they need tuning. Okay. Okay, so the stabilizers are all just fine. Uh, that new thick, um, thick pieces is, is okay. Look at how crooked it is. Uh, well, that's just box switches for you. Um, where's crooked? I'm not sure what I see is crooked. What's crooked, guys? Oh, it's the ISO enter that's crooked. Okay. Look at the G. Oh yeah, the G is off as well. Box stems. That's what it is for you guys. Uh, it's box stems. Let's see if we can just twist the keycap a little bit. Oh, looks like we're getting a visit from the doggo. I don't know if you guys can hear the dog running around in the background. Go on. Out you go. Come here. Come <laughs> My wife's trying to get the dog out of the office now. <laughs> there we go guys okay so there we go guys um, that's the board built uh, yeah box stems sorry you're absolutely right they're not the best uh, yeah we had to get the dog out by calling them for treats and she goes oh what? okay she knows that word that and walk are the two words that she knows really really well so there we go guys um, I'm going to pause the music I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. I do have music on in the background you guys probably can't hear it so I'm going to just mute that anyway um, let's do a bit of a sound test for this board let's see how you uh, how you like this so Joan this is going to be really loud I apologize if it's too loud um, but let's do a bit of a typing test
There we go, guys. I I hope that is uh, loud enough for you, Joan, because that is really, really, really loud. Um, stop now. Yeah, that is so loud. Uh, looks like my hands are dancing when I type. Yes, they, I, I don't have correct typing technique, but that's fine. Um, wow. I've forgotten how much I love the sound of box navies, but I couldn't use them for more than 10 minutes. I think they heard you in the Netherlands. Probably, yeah. <laughs> this is so loud, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, guys, if you got hearing damage. I do apologise. I did warn you we were building a loud build today. Um, sounds like first Call of Duty. It does, yeah, gunfire. There you go, machine gun fires. There you go. So, Joan, I hope that works for you. Uh, you will need some keycaps for the board. If you need some help getting some keycaps for it, let me know, and I'll try and do my best to do that for you. I'll get this in the post to you this week. Uh, but as you can see, here it is again. Uh, Grey blue case with uh, box navies, brass plate uh, build for laser boost. So there we go. Okay, so I'll take the keycaps off that off stream, and uh, I'll uh, I'll sort all of that kind of stuff out. What we did say we were going to do for the last item on the stream before we finish up today is we are going to do a J-score for the Equinox. Um, this is a prototype so again we'll skip some of it out. Let me just get up the uh, the, the J-score here and uh, I'll take it from there. Uh, I just need to make sure that I'm going to get the right um, help. Why can I not find it? There it is. <clears throat> okay, so let me uh, let me just get that up for you. Let me just make sure I'm going to share the right bit of my screen. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ta-da! There you go. So you can see we've now got the J keyboard scores uh, up on stream. I'll just expand that a little bit for you, just there. Um, okay, so we're going to be doing <laughs> this row here. So this is the Equinox. Uh, and in this we've just got uh, GMK uh, Vince, uh, so Vint Bikes. The plate in here, there is no plate, so it's plateless build. And I, this was a prototype, so I'm not going to put the cost in for this one because that would be unfair of me for, to do so. Okay, so as normal, whenever we do one of these builds, uh, sorry, uh, that, why is that not working? Okay, hold on, let me, uh, can I freeze panes in that scene there? Does that, does that work on here? Where's freeze panes? Where the hell is freeze panes in this? I can't find freeze panes on here, so no idea why. Why does Google doc, uh, Google Sheets not not copy everything that Excel does? Oh, freeze panes. Uh, up to current row four. Sorry, you can't freeze row, rows which contain only part of a mode, so I'll try to break apart. All oh, right, okay. Okay, so we're not going to be able to do that, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide uh, these for now, and then we'll do it that way. Can we do that? Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, so you guys still can't see it, so let's hide these as well. There we go. Okay, so there we go. You guys can see it now. So we'll do the uh, the J score as uh, as well. Now, because it's a prototype build, we won't be doing any of the build scores. So we'll be taking it out of that because uh, the packaging, the first impressions, and everything else that tends to be uh, difficult to do with prototype boards. So we'll just do it for the home score and also for the work score. Um, in terms of the value, I think when we've done the doppelganger as well, uh, we haven't been able to score that one either, so we've just taken that one off there. So we'll just start off with the style scores. So I'll just catch up with chat as well before we start to do this. Um, Petrov's here as well. Good evening, Mr. Petrov. Kwedenka's off as well. See you later, Petrov. Uh, see you later, Kwedenka. Uh, I want to know, by the way, when ordering a sleeve, do you have dimensions on the Equinox? I can send you those, yeah. I can measure it and send you those later on. That's not a problem. Uh, I didn't think ISO on a 40 would look that good. It looks great, right? Um, yeah, works really well. 
DM me about that JO2 deal. Okay, I'll, I'll DM you, yeah. Uh, is this spreadsheet post anyway? Yes, if you type in exclamation mark JSCOR, you can see it live there. Uh, so you guys can have a look at it whilst we go through it. So as I said before, because this is a prototype board and it's not the production one, we won't do the build scores and we won't do the value score either. We'll just go from style onwards, which is what we did for the doppelganger, which was also a prototype build, so just to keep it nice and easy and fair. So, the first thing we're going to do is give it a score out of 10 for style. So, 0 is a bad score, it has no style, and 10 is a good score, it has great style. So, to help you and aid you in this, this is how the board looks. Uh, I do usually have an artist on there, so let's put one on just so you guys can see. Doesn't really match, but there we go. Um, this is what the board looks like uh, from the top. We've got a nice side profile, and you can see it's got some nice finger wedge that you can pick the board up with just there. Uh, in terms of the back, center USB-C. Uh, it's also got this angle off the back as well, which is really nice, and screw ports are through there as well, which we'll take a look at in a second. On the base, it's got the Equinox logo, and just a nice flush base on there. This is a really deep engraving on here. It's been CNC milled into it. Um, Bump-ons, four bump-ons just in the corners as you'd expect. Seams all the way around, nice, neat and tidy. Uh, nothing too untoward showing there. There's a slight color differentiation, but again, this is a prototype. It's kind of expected. In terms of the mount style, so we couldn't see this before, but this is plate mount, so there is no, sorry, PCB mount, there is no plate in this build, it's very much a PCB mount, very similar to how the IDB60s work, it's just got four mount points, there is some flexibility to the board that's difficult to show you on camera, um, I don't know how well you can see that that's flex, flexing in there, but it is, there is some flex in there. Um, where I'm pressing, so yeah, uh, it's a nice, evenly balanced build. So, scores out of 10 for style. So, if you think it looks great, closer to 10. If you think it looks terrible, closer to 0. Guys, if you put into chat now your scores between 0 and 10, uh, timestamps are 29 past the hour onwards, and let me know what you think. Whilst you guys are probably putting that in, I think this is a really good stylistic board. I love the wing keyless blockers. Uh, one new blockers is really nice, especially on the 14. Doesn't lose any functionality because of that. Uh, I think it looks great. It's nice, it's balanced, it's small. I'm going to give it an 8 for my score. And uh, I'll give you guys a second to come up with your scores as well. Okay, <clears throat> kind of wish the bottom was a different colour, say black. Um, yeah, I mean, you could do that. I do want to infill this at some point, um, so we'll see how that goes. There, there is another top that's on its way to, to me. I'm not sure if you can see, there is like a, a mark in the alley here. I'm not sure if that's going to show on camera. So because of that, Pona is actually sending me another top uh, at some point. So we'll see when we get that. Okay, guys, if you want to stop there, let's see what you guys have given this as a score. Uh, so a 9, a solid 11 out of 10, 7, 8, 10, 10, 10, 8, 8. So high scores. Zambamon already voted. Uh, look at that, it's a 10. Yeah, so Zambamon's going to give it two 10s, so there we go. Wing keyless is optional. Yes, it is. It wasn't on mine. I didn't have a choice. It was wing keyless or not get a prototype. Uh, everyone who hasn't voted 10 smells like cheese. Um, Fair enough. Okay, so I think you guys are probably a little bit higher than me here. There's so many 10s in there and a few 9s that they probably way outweigh the 7s and the 8s. So I think you guys are going to go a 9 on that one. Okay. Uh, in terms of the quality, uh, again, because you guys didn't see the build stream today, um, I think it, the, the only things I can tell you about the quality are there's 8 screw ports. It's really well held together. Um, it looks good. There is a mark on it, but it's a prototype, so that's to be expected. This is uh, a round to flush out all of those kinds of things. Um, it's very solid, uh, there's a slight colour mismatch, uh, it works well though however because of that. Um, I think overall in terms of quality I think 7, I think I've seen better manufacturers but if you guys want to pull, put your scores in now anything with a 31 timestamp and later and we'll go from that but I'm going to give it a 7. <coughs> Let's see what you guys think, give you guys a minute to put that in, put the music back on as well, I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. There we go. Remember, it's all just for fun, guys. It doesn't matter what you come up with. You don't have to make it too difficult to decide. 
<clears throat> uh, Pono could have used less sketches. Fair enough. Um, I mean, with a better manufacturer, I think this was the same manufacturer as the IDB, if I remember rightly, um, which is known for price and speed, not necessarily quality. Um, uh, with a better manufacturer, this board could be easily up, up in that quality. And I don't know which manufacturer is being used for the production run, if I'm honest, so it could definitely increase that. <laughs> Sorry, it says 10. Pona needs to use more sketches. Fair enough. Okay, let's, uh, let's stop it there, guys. So I think you guys are a little bit higher because there's a couple of 9.5s. Uh, and a couple of 8s in there, and a couple of 7.5s as well. So I think you guys are a little bit higher. I'm going to put down for an 8 for that one. Uh, I am going to have to mute the music again, because I'm going to need to give you a typing sound for it, so you guys can listen to what it sounds like. So uh, anything with a timestamp of 32 and over, you guys can... <clears throat> Excuse me. Put a timestamp in. Uh, sorry, put a, a score in after the timestamp of thirty-three, uh, and let me know what you think. Missed the end there because I'm used to being a bit a bit wider uh, than that. I'm not used to wear a 40. I use this as a travel board, so I'm very rare I use it at a full desk. So there you go. Okay, guys, let's uh, stop that there. So 7.5, a 7, 6.5, an 8, an 8. So these are Vint Blacks. I mean, maybe this is just what a quintessential keyboard should sound like. Loud, clacky space bar. There's, no, there's only two stabilizers in the board, so I can't give you a hint of what the stabilizers sound like, really. Um, I think uh, type of sound for me is a solid 8. It, it sounds really good. I think it's a great sounding board. Um, sorry, my keyboard's underneath there. I couldn't see them. Uh, kind of hollow. I don't think it sounds hollow particularly. Uh, so let's see what you've scored it. Zambo says solid 8. Ten Strong says 8. Depleted Vespine says 8. Um, everyone's up there with the 8s. So Lomaniac says 88, so I'm going to guess that's an 8 as well. Uh, a 10 for the hand dance. Okay, thanks very much. 7 because you use meme switches. Thought it sounded pretty good. Shame there isn't a backspace. So actually how this is programmed, just for you guys to know, is that's backspace, that's backspace, that's backspace, that's enter. <laughs> so I actually have it on tap then so you have to hold it for enter and tap it for backspace so there you go uh, yes that gets really confusing yes I sometimes delete sentences instead of entering onto a new line yes I sometimes enter onto a new line instead of deleting stuff but uh, yeah um, I, uh, I try and get used to it to be honest it doesn't work too badly I get used to it and it, it's okay Okay, so I think you guys probably give that an 8 as well. You guys are pretty up there with the numbers, so I'm pretty comfortable that you guys are giving that an 8 as well. Um, okay, typing feel. So you guys are going to have to take my word for this. This feels very similar to the uh, the Jer 80 in terms of typing feel. Uh, very much a PCB mount board, so it's very soft on the bottom out, but it's still quite firm with it. So I really enjoy typing on this. This is quite possibly one of the nicest travel boards I've ever typed on. It even beats my TMO50 for typing feel, uh, even though that's quite a mean board, I know. But I really, really, really love this. It's just such a nice feeling board. So you guys are going to have to trust me on this one, but I give it a 9 from a feeling perspective. Uh, you're going to have to trust me. Uh, innovation, so good score here is better, so the higher the score the better, so innovation, is there anything new we haven't seen here before? Um, for me, points to consider, I would say that it's a 40% with blockers and ISO availability, and a 6U spacebar, um, just for to be different, so I think it's quite innovative from that perspective. You guys put some, some scores up for innovation then, uh, 9.35 and onwards is the time stamp we're looking for for this one, um, give me a score out of, of innovation out of 10, higher is better. Higher means it's very innovative, low score means it's not very innovative. Just to show you again, we've got the nice finger cutouts. I'm not sure how difficult it would be to pick up a 40% without the finger cutouts, but there we go. Uh, engraved logo, probably nothing too innovative there. But it is PCB mount, which we don't see too often, although this isn't the first board to do it. Give me your scores, guys. I'm going to say it's pretty innovative. Um, it's got a lot of new ideas that are rolled into one, but I don't think the 
they're not all used in the for the first time. These aren't new ideas for the first time. I'm going to give it an eight. Let's see what you guys come up with. It's right to agree or disagree with me. There's no right answers here, guys. So let's stop it there. Anything after 9:35? Uh, depleted recipe says, "I wonder if a low thin ISO enter could be used here." Uh, it only supports a full size standard ISO enter. It doesn't support anything other than that. So uh, um, we will go with that. So uh, go on, some give it a 10. Nine for ISO 40 says bled in. Zambamus says nine as well. Baby Phil says nine. Eight from depleted best bean. Couple of eights in there. A couple of tens. Innovation ten says Zambamon. You've just given it a nine. <laughs> a nine and then a ten. Uh, it would be ten if that left shift had more options. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Uh, three from ten strong. He gives it a really low score. Um, and I like the platelessness actually. The platelessness is really nice. It's what makes it feel so good. It does feel so nice. It's like a dream to type on. Uh, even with heavy or light switches, this would be a dream to type on. I do need to get another PCB so I can put some tactiles in it and try that as well. Okay, so I think you guys are broadly in line with me. Maybe a touch higher. I think you guys probably go to an 8.5 because there's a lot of 9s in there. Um, the 3 probably doesn't let it down too much from 10 strong. So I'm going to go for uh, an 8.5 from you guys. Uh, this is hard to see my keyboard underneath that. Okay, last one on home score. Cool factor. How cool do you think this board is? 10 out of 10, is it super cool? Uh, 0 out of 10, is it just not cool at all? Um, let me know what you think, guys. Timestamps looking for 38, so anything after 38 will count for this one. Is it cool? High score is it's really cool. Low score is it doesn't look cool at all. Um, judging my particular build here, uh, with the ISO enter, <laughs> that might affect the scores. Sorry, uh, Powder, if it does. Uh, Equinox logo on the base. I think that's pretty cool, right? It's nice, easy to carry, 40%. It just works. It's nice, steady way kind of board. Let's uh, see what you guys come up with. I'm going to give it a solid 8 as well for uh, for cool factor. <clears throat> okay, stop there, guys. Uh, so we're looking for 38 and onwards. Uh, 10 strong only likes 200% keyboards. He'd love the Hyper 7 then. He'd love my Hyper 7. Uh, I just don't think it's innovative. That's fine. There's no right or wrong answers, 10 strong. You can think what you like. Um, that's absolutely fine. Uh, 10 from Duckcom, 10 from Mantic Zeus, 9 from KIYRT, 6.5 from 10, 9 from Low Maniac, 10, 8, 10, 6, 8, 2.1, 9, 8.75. <laughs> so everyone's holding up the cards for divers here. Uh, Equinox split would be even cool. So you can do a split space bar option. I'm pretty sure that is on the production PCB. Five for coolness and five bonus coolness points for stupidity. That's a good way of putting it. I like that. Okay, so <laughs> it's up to ten. Uh, hi, uh, or hi. I'm going to call you hi. It's easier. Uh, it's up to ten. Uh, but I do get what you mean. You can have full shift here, or you could. Uh, what I think people say before is you could have a one U key and then a one point two five U key. That'd be an interesting way to split it up as well. Okay, so I think you guys are probably broadly in line with me. There's a few nines, but there's a few low scores as well. So I'm going to give it an eight for that one. Two. Okay, so uh, work score, practicality. How practical is this board? Is it something that you could carry around? Is it something that you can use to type on? Is it something you're going to struggle with to do your work on um, in you know in detail? Are you a programmer? Do you need more keys than this, or is this perfect for you? Is this going to absolutely allow you to do all of the work that you need to do at work? Is it going to be easier to carry around? Uh, the higher the practicality, the higher the score. For me, this is really practical from a travel perspective, but it's not great for in the office, so this just sits in my bag once I get to the office. Um, I use it with my iPad quite often, uh, just for typing up documents and mostly Discord, I'll be honest. Um, so for me, I think practical carrying it around is quite good, but practicality in the office is quite low, and this is a work score. I'm going to give it a nice even five overall for this one. Um, so there we go. Let's give it a five. Let's see what you guys are coming up with. Uh, so we're looking for a time stamp of 40 and above. Uh, so twos, uh, a four, a two, a three, a seven, a five. Now all the 40% haters come forth. Uh, hey, I can only go by what chat give me. Uh, 10 if you remove the ISO enter, says Soran. Um, yeah, I mean, you can you can, you can can remove this and have uh, uh, a 1.25U and uh, a 1.5U key. That's uh, absolutely possible. Uh, what happened to your sub? Oh, there we go. Did you sub? Uh, I only saw the ISO return subscription, haven't seen one since then. <laughs> if it's there, I'm sorry. Uh, only for on the go, not for anything else. It's 7.5 practical, can be used with tablets for sure. Yeah, I use mine with my iPad Pro all the time. Um, I just sit my iPad there, put this up. It's great on the train, dead, dead, dead easy for that kind of thing. 
Okay, so I think you guys are probably a little bit higher than me overall. There's a couple of sixes and a couple of sevens, but there's a couple of lower scores as well. In fact, there's quite a few sevens in there. I think your guys are going to be probably about 5.5. And I am working on the bot to aggregate your scores as well. So some point soon we will get that. Um, office acceptance. So now we're going to go on to uh, good enough for Twitch chat. Yeah, absolutely. Good enough for any type of chat. Discord. Anywhere you don't need punctuation is great. Uh, <laughs> Office acceptance. If this was on your desk in the office, how easily would it be accepted? Would people look at it weirdly or would people barely notice it's there? The higher the score, the more people aren't going to notice it. It's not going to be uh, uh, a challenge for you to get it into the office. People aren't going to uh, notice it. If this is on your desk, how easy is this going to fit into the office environment? So if I had this on my desk, I think people would notice pretty much quick, pretty quickly. But then again, they do notice because I take a different board in for the actual day job quite often. Um, Oh, they will notice. Yeah, they probably will notice. Yeah, um, I think this is going to be a challenge for me to get away with in the office as well. So I think from an office acceptance perspective, I'm going to go with 3.5, which is a shame, shamefully low score because I really love this board. But um, yeah, let's see what you guys come up with. Uh, Bled in dailies are 40 at work, so he's fine with it. Uh, it just didn't show on a comment, so maybe a week back. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I can't go that far back, I don't think. Um, <clears throat> ten eight four four eight six nine two. Oh, they will notice three two three one. Scores getting low. I think it's just the color. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so I have seen the gray one of these in real life as well. Chris Swire's got a gray one. That was lovely. Um, that was probably more acceptable for the office. But we're judging this particular one. Um. So we stop there on the scores, guys. I think you guys are probably uh, all over the place here. So I think you guys are probably averaging everywhere between one and ten. So I think it's. It's only fair to go in middle of the road and put you guys down as a five on that one. Okay, last submission then before we uh, before we finish up the J score and I start to check all the formulas because we need to ignore the build score um, and the total home score. Yeah, uh, so that's going to be J because we missed one, and that's going to be J because we missed one. <laughs> the percentages. It's going to be 60, so I'm just going to tweak this on the fly. Okay, so whilst you guys are doing that, noise level, volume, uh, how noise, from a noise level, how acceptable is this in the office, guys? Um, so if I type again, is this good enough for the office? I think this is pretty fairly an 8, it's absolutely fine, perfectly acceptable for the office. It's not super duper quiet like a silence which you'd get there, uh, they are cherry mech blacks but they're well lubed, it's, it's a nice even noise, it's not going to annoy or offend people I don't think. Um, so there we go. I'll give you guys another uh, another few seconds, membrane boards allowed, this is Zambu, yeah it's probably fair, yeah it's probably fair. Give you guys another 30 seconds to put some scores in, see where you get to. And then we'll uh, we'll finish up and we'll take a look at what we've got to uh, from the rest of the uh, from the rest of the percentages. Okay, it doesn't look like any more scores are coming in, so uh, we'll go for this one: eight, nine, seven, seven, eight, nine. Interesting. So uh, the average of those is definitely an eight. That's right in the centre of those ones there. So uh, we'll go that you guys put down an eight as well. Okay, so that does complete the J score, which uh, gives us a final grade of a D. Um, so uh, the grand total score, 50% score uh, from me, and you guys scored it 53%, so a slight bit higher. In fact, actually, that's uh, that's actually not true because that's counting up the wrong parts. That's counting up that zero as well. So I need to just adjust this one quickly. Let me do that, and let me do that. Uh, and it's divided by, it's not divided by that, what's it divided by? It's, uh, 30, 40 off that, so it's divided by 90. Okay. I should have prepped this before the stream, I do apologise. Uh, so we're going to get a better score here, guys. This is going to bump the score up because we've adjusted this one. Okay, so there we go. So split decision, so I give it a B, you guys give it an A. So there we go, guys. You guys gave it a B, I gave it an A. Nice work, guys. <laughs> you guys have. Uh, you guys are definitely uh, a little bit more lenient than I am. Let's just see if I unhide these rows. Um, 
how that stacks up. So just in terms of the Lynn Whale, we both gave that a B, so uh, it's very, very close to the Lynn Whale from myself. It's just a couple of points in it. Uh, from your guys' perspective, you're almost 10 points higher on this particular uh, build compared to the Lynn Whale, which is interesting. Sadly, it doesn't beat the profit on either scores. Profit uh, gets 83% uh, from both J score and from the community score, which is significantly higher, five points higher. Uh, than uh, six points higher than uh, than the A that you guys give the uh, the Equinox, um, but it is better than the uh, Matrix 1.20G, uh, significantly higher from both of us, uh, and the SKB as well. Sadly, languishing at the back there, which is a shame because that that test probably didn't do that board the greatest of uh, uh, of representation. So there we go, guys. There we go. Uh, that being said, I do need to do my hot take for the Equinox. Um, so my hot take for the Equinox is this is fucking usable, right? Excuse my French, but this is fucking usable. If I can use this, anyone can use the 40. Um, so, yeah. There we go. So there we go. We'll pop that in for the J score. Um, <laughs> B from me and an A from the community so Equinox is a hit there we go guys you've had it okay so <clears throat> no D for you boys Karcher calm it down calm it down or I'll tell everyone what you're using in your keyboard to uh, to give it some sound dampening uh, Tenstrong says C plus from J B minus from the community yeah you need to, uh, to go and have a look at all of those scores Tenstrong I know you've done it on the sheet too so we'll have a look at how that all works out and I'll work out that but um, there is some new weightings on there that Tenstrong has been doing for me so we'll, uh, we'll work out how that looks and, and fix that but yeah Cool. There we go, guys. Thank you very much for that. Unless there's any final questions, I'm going to finish the stream there. So remember, we've looked at GMK Waves, built a board for uh, Joan from Laser Boost, which looks fantastic. Um, apart from these keys, I'm not keen on the accents, but I really do like the set other than that. Um, it's very green. Uh, Zambu, I'll, I'll be interested, Zambu, actually, how you how you think this compares to what your vision for Nautilus Nightmares is. Uh, I know that your legends are different, but this base green that's on the space bar, for example, it looks very similar to... Uh, to the base queen you were looking for, so or at least in my head it does. So I'll be interested to see what you think on that. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to uh, close the stream down there, guys. So uh, shall I PM you Discord about the dimensions? Yes, if you do that, I can measure it straight after the stream. That's not a problem. Uh, and I can just get my calipers out and measure the board. That's not a problem. Yes. Um, I'll be back next week on Thursday on Top Clack uh, for the main show. And I'll also be back next Sunday for a build stream. It's probably going to be the Unicorn. So this is the Velvet Unicorn we unboxed earlier on today. Um, I'm really excited for that build. Been looking forward to it for a while. Last Batch Gang, finally here. Finally. Um, so I'm looking forward to that uh, as well as that don't forget guys you can get a J01 raffle ticket they are five pounds a piece we've raised uh, we've sold over 1500 raffle tickets already to date I'm hoping to sell over 2000 it closes the day before Christmas Eve on the 23rd of December I'll be drawing the winner of that on the show on the 26th of December top clack show live there I'll reach out to the winner you get the board shipped to you free of charge you get everything you possibly need there's gonna be some extras in there a couple of artisans um, some other bits and pieces as well that people have donated and if anyone is interested in the final J01 that will also be raffled off to the highest bidder and that money will also be used for the same charity which is Sue Ryder you guys can go and look that up uh, in your own time as well um, and uh, yeah I'm hoping that we can raise some good money with that final A stock board in January so watch this space for that coming <clears throat> uh, what personal boards have I got coming soon? Uh, so I've got the PC Canoe. Uh, you've just seen the uh, Velvet Singer. I do have one of the IDB 60s, which is downstairs. I've got 70 or 80 of them downstairs. One of those is mine. Um, I have got some other stuff coming, but I think that's all I'll get this side of Christmas. I have got another prototype for the J02 coming, which has got some slight tweaks. Uh, and this will also prove the uh, Space Great and Copper variants as well, which is going to be the limited edition. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's everything I've got coming this year. Uh, I have got some other stuff coming that's not mine to talk about, but that's going to be probably in the new year now anyway. But uh, suffice it to say, I've still got a stack of about eight or nine boards. There's still plenty of build stream content. We aren't going to be running out of content anytime soon. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to call it an evening there now. And uh, if you do have any questions, thoughts, concerns, please reach out to me on Discord um, and uh, I'll be happy to speak to you. But thanks very much, guys. And I'll see you again soon. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.